Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and in a recent video I showed you the auction where I bought this 15-inch uh, Delta drill press, and I paid $190 for it, and it's a model 1500 period 000 made in the early 60s, probably after 1962 or so. So the purpose of this video is to just kind of examine it and give you an analysis of uh, what I bought here because it looks like a pretty nice machine. Now it's a 15 inch and what 15 inch means is that it has a reach and can drill to the center of a 15 inch disc or in other words it has a seven and a half inch throw. So that's how they determine the size on some of these drill presses. I don't know if they still do that. It does have a tilting table, so there's a protractor right here, and the table can be tilted to perhaps 45 degrees or even more in each direction. Do not confuse my new 15-inch drill press with variable speed with this other model of Rockwell Delta drill press that has been in my basement for years, also a 15-inch, but appears to be more of an industrial model. The table is bigger, everything about it is a little, little bit bigger. The thing that I don't like about this one is the variable drive is terribly noisy. So I seldom use this. However, it's still not for sale. This one was probably made in the 70s when they dropped the Delta name. It's just straight Rockwell. When I was a boy in the Sears catalog, they generally sold three of each item that was a popular seller, and they labeled the cheapest one uh, as good, and then the middle one was better, and the expensive one was best. So. As far as I'm concerned, this type of quill feed with a single handle is really only rated as good. That's the downfall of this machine, but let me show you what better and best is on my other presses. Watch this. And three handles on the quill feed is better. And lastly, four handles on the quill feed, like on this little Walker Turner drill press, is best. So we had good, better, and best. I believe this drill press was aimed at the home market rather than the professional shops because it has a few items on it that uh, seem a little cheap and I probably will change this to a handle with uh, three handles on it. I'll have to make one and that would be a video in itself, but it does allow you to raise and lower this or to even position it by loosening this into different positions depending on what you're drilling because, because uh, a singular handle like this is quite often in the wrong orientation depending on what you're doing and that's also true on arbor presses if you ever use an arbor press that does not have a ratchet right here. So I would say that that is one of the downfalls of this little press. This machine was made in America, so everything is just nice quality. It's a Rockwell Delta motor, half horse, capacitor start, 110 volt, but I definitely have to replace the cord. You can see the cracks, and someone has taped it in many places with red electrical tape, which was a half step of a measure, but I will change that here in the very near future. This machine has a nice wide cast iron base, approximately 15 inches. If you look at some of the uh, newer imported drill presses in the stores, you're going to see that they have a rather narrow base that does not give it the stability that I think it should have. Some of them you would actually need to bolt to the floor or put on a piece of plywood to give it stability. A little bit of superficial rust here on the base and right down here at the bottom of the column and possibly this was in a drill press or was in a garage or in a basement so it picked up some moisture. Not much tarnish near the uh, top of the machine. It's all near the bottom. I'd like to get a hold of some Delta Gray and paint that. 
I believe this machine has received very, very little use in its probably 55 years of existence. Notice there's not a single hole drilled into the table and it came with the original chuck key and this uh, turn down end here of course was used to hold the uh, collar here if you had to change the chuck. There appears to be some of the original packing grease on some of the parts. And a nice cutler hammer switch. That alone would be a $40 or $50 item if you had to buy it. And it came complete with a work light and a bulb that actually still burns. If you notice on the back on the motor here on this junction box there is a place for a switch and I had seen many of their cheaper machines equipped with a toggle switch and sometimes with a rod that went all the way toward the front with a loop on it and that would be your on and off rather than a higher quality switch like this. So that's some of the nice features of this machine. And I double checked the protractor here and it does tilt a full 90 degrees in each direction, something that I will probably never use. And here's the serial number and model plate. And I already found a manual for it online and printed it out with parts. I've already loosened the guard so I can take it off and we can look at the workings and it's all steel and it's really quite heavy and well built. Probably weighs 15 pounds. All right, let me start it and run it through its RPM range. And that's just done by turning this little knob. And its range is about from 450 up to approximately 3400 or so. Well, I'm sure you notice immediately that the arrow, the indicator here, is missing. Well, I took it out because it didn't work. And the, here is the reason why it didn't work. This is the shaft and the little sprocket. It's not a gear, it's a sprocket that fits through here onto which the arrow is attached. But what appears to have happened is, as I took this out, it was pretty well seized in the hole right here. I did free it up, but I believe what happened is at some point somebody used it, and since it was seized, it broke the little connecting chain. So they used a chain and sprocket rather than a belt and rather than gears to connect between this shaft and this shaft and they are not in the same axis they are perhaps 10 degrees apart so they needed a little flexibility but anyway this chain is broken does anybody know where I can get something like that rather than going to Rockwell I'm sure they don't have it but that fits into the sprockets that probably was the weak point here in uh, this drill press And this is flexible enough so that it would allow for the misalignment of the two shafts. One alternate for me would be to make two pulleys and use an O-ring or something like that as a belt. I'd have to retain the ratio, which is about two to one. Okay, enough on that. Little disappointment to me, but I did notice at the auction house that this wasn't working that would not have prevented me from buying it. Now let's take a look at the drive mechanism and the belt, as old as it is, seems to be in pretty good condition. And it's a genuine Rockwell part that I found the label on there. But the variable pitch pulley is something that's used on snowmobiles and many, many other products. But now they're even incorporating this into the transmissions of many cars a Nissan Murano and a Honda CRV being among them. I believe they run in oil, but it gives you infinitely variable speed rather than just six speeds transmissions or ten speeds or whatever it is that they're making. 
I know this is dangerous without the guard, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's the lowest speed. And as I turn the crank, So you can see that one pulley is opening up and the other pulley is closing. And the back pulley here on the motor is what I'm actually activating through a screw. Well, actually it's a rod with a little rack and pinion. It's a rather complex mechanism with a lever here that's forcing this opening and closing it. And the other one is just following, well supported with a bearing up here. Nicely made. And this is the driven pulley on the spindle. And now looking inside of the front cover here, the little sprocket you see up at the top is the sprocket that uh, would drive that indicator needle on the front. And then right below it here is another sprocket with my finger on it and that is uh, what drives the needle in about a two to one ratio. Do not confuse this sprocket with the gear. And there's a gear here and several other gears that are attached to the sh shaft that I talked about. Let me turn that on. I'll take this out so it doesn't fall and get caught in something. But when I turn the machine on, watch the gear. I'm on the other side of the machine now and I think that everybody watching that knows anything about variable speed drives know that you are supposed to run it through its complete range every day to minimize wear in one spot on these shivs and the other thing to do is that you must never attempt to change the speeds while the machine is not running. Now looking from uh, this point this shaft here is what comes from the gear cluster when we uh, cause it to change speeds. And then on the end here, there is a pinion gear. And this is a rack. It's not a gear. So we got a rack and a pinion here is what we got. And when I turn it on, that's what is actuating this entire lever here that I talked about a few minutes ago that goes back to the, uh, the shiv back here. I probably should have put this on uh, how it works and made a video out of it uh, there. This is quite a different mechanism here than uh, the other delta press that I showed you down in the basement. The principle up here with the variable pitch pulleys is the same, but the, all the actuating mechanism is totally different. So watch the rack and pinion now as I run it through its paces. complicated mechanism I can see why they probably didn't sell many of these because they had to jack up the price considerably over the standard step pulley type of drill presses and people just couldn't afford that back then it was American made and it was high priced so this is the only press of this model that I have ever seen I've seen several of the other ones like I showed you in the basement but not this model well, I hope you enjoyed the little video and analysis of my new 15-inch variable speed delta drill press. And there's only 
about three things left to do. Number one is to get it down my basement and bring up another press that I probably have to get rid of. I have too many presses down there. Fix the uh, pointer system up here and right now I'm on my way to Ace Hardware store to buy 10 foot of number 14-3 rubber cord and a brand new grounded plug. So this is Tubal Cane saying so long for now and I hope to see you in my next video or one of my eight or nine hundred other videos.